Steve, a goalless draw here against Bristol Rovers. Plenty of chances, but just missing that, that killer touch in the end. What were your thoughts on it? Well, exactly like you've just uh, summarised there. I don't know how this game is finished. No, no, we've missed chance after chance, a success to chances early in the game, mid game, for half time, second half, success and chances. And that's the difference of winning today. You know, but we, I think we went to Hexa last week and I come out and take the responsibility and said we got it completely wrong. We got it all by scoring a goal, we got it right today. We've This is a good Bristol Rovers team. It's the best point they'll ever get in their history because they've, they've hardly got their half, haven't they? So, but you have to, when you're laying sage to the goal like that, you have to you have to punish teams and you have to take the chances. And um, we've tried every striker at a football club on the pitch today to try and get us the goal. but. It, it just would happen, they rode the luck as well, they had ricochets and things go hit the crossbar, hit the post and um, but we'll, we'll take a lot of positives from that and we'll go again on Monday. How do you reflect on it then in terms of the chances that you did have? Is it difficult to be too critical because your players are getting into those areas, it's either a goalkeeper's save or it's off the bar or the crossbar? Well it's not just the strikers that missed the chances today, you know I think Chris T could have had a couple, Haxa Kim could have had a couple, Jimmy Carp perhaps rather hit the crossbar should score. You know, it's just a success and a chances. I, I think anyone that watches the highlights of this game will see it. Um, I know this Miller support that we're raised until the 97th minute today because they, they felt the goal was coming. If they could have sucked it in, they would have sucked it in, but it, it just wasn't to be. So um, we'll go back on the training ground and we'll work hard. Um, we've got an identity. The players are aware of that now in the last couple of games, how we want to play. There's no more extra nonsense. And, uh, and if we play like that, we'll, we'll do okay in a, in a tough league, but we'll do okay. Other than the chances created, what was the most pleasing part of the performance? I think the combinations worked. Um, I think we were strong defensively. We, you know, we've limited a counter-attacking team to the to the odd pop at goal, maybe a couple. Um, one first half, I remember, one second half when they'd done a counter-attack. Um, you know, we're, we had to be careful as well. We had some big players on a yellow card early in the game for us. They had none. <laughs> Only Neil here, the referee, will understand why that is, but they had none. Um, I'll ask him and he'll, uh, he'll give me his explanations, but that's not any reason why we didn't win the game today. We were really positive in our play. The changes were positive, the, the, the game changes, or the substitutes as we call them, but the game changes come on and had an impact. John Hugel almost scores with a tremendous volley. And, um, and sheer luck was against us today, but you have, to, you have to turn that wheel of luck in your favour. And everyone will look around the country today and say, we started one, out of six, one point out of six. But we've achieved some things today, first clean cheat, of course, first point of the season and a real dominant performance against a team that will be that will do okay and, and they go on. I think the opposition managers was to me a team up some that we've had a battering <laughs> and um, I, I just nodded and, sm and smiled. Is the key in a, a game like today as frustrating as it was though? I mean, you touched on it a little bit with a clean sheet, but if you can't win a game at one end, make sure you don't lose it at the other. Yeah, listen, defenders done the job. You can do no more as a goalkeeper and... A, and and, a, and the team, it's not just the back boys, but the team, I think we defended well from the front. So we, we got a, a clean sheet. We, we attacked well from from deep as well. I thought Reese James was, was really good today. I, I thought Alex McDonald put in a real shift for the team. I thought his centre-backs were commanding against tough opponents. You know, they're bringing Sinclair on, they're bringing Chris Martin on, they're bringing really good players on. They were no threat. And they are good players. And that's testament to how our boys played. So... Mm. We'll, we'll go home disappointed. I was as far as beneath the tarmac on an airport as you could get after Exeter because I got it wrong. So I judge in first, the team got it wrong. And collectively we spoke on Sunday and Monday and said we would change this. We should have beat Crew by seven or eight. We should have won today, six or seven. So, but we've not. So we're, the only application we have is to go back on the training ground and have a desire to win these chances, come to take them. That's not just strikers. Mm. We're attacking midfield players, missed big chances and big touches today. Joe Pearl, who I thought was outstanding, has a bad touch, two minutes to go and run into the box I needed. If he touches it properly, he scores. Mm. So things like that will stick in my mind, but we'll also go away saying we found an identity. The Miller support have watched <laughs> the opposite to that for two years. They've, they've seen a team today who's going to play in the front foot. And when you do that, they're with you. Mm. Those combinations, you mentioned Powell there, him and Rhys James down that left seem to really click from an early period. I thought it was really good. I thought they had, um, they had both were technically very good anyway. I thought they passed the ball well, they found each other very well. They put some dynamic balls into the box. Should we be on the front and do more with them? Yes. 
But I, I look at the first half, their goalkeeper's lying on the floor and makes a save from one of our centre backs and our striker should tap it in, but we had the goalkeeper again. These are the little moments that are the difference between winning and not winning. Was that five minute spell where Griffiths denied Nombe twice and Humphreys perhaps the key one when you look back over all the chances? If you get one in that five minute spell, you probably go on and get more. Yeah, I think we do go and get a few more, but we should score them. You know, Cam should score. Cam was disappointed when he came in at half time and, and, and listen, Sam didn't say much. He's a quiet boy, but listen, he should have three or four today. Hmm. The three players you rated as doubtful before the game, Rafferty, Raggett and, and Hungbo, how close or not so were they to, to being involved? Yeah, listen, probably probably from from midweek, we knew they'd be missing seven to ten days, so that nothing changes. Uh, obviously, you miss somebody of Raggett's presence. You can see the amount of um, corners and set plays we've had today. We don't really have a dominant uh, attacker in those situations that, that Sean Raggett brings you. You're always going to miss the class of Rafferty, but in fairness to Arnold McDonald, he stood up as I said he would and played games and did really well. And you're always going to miss the, the quality of Humble. You know, you're, he's, he's such a fantastic talent. So. The dressing room's are in a really good place. It's my job to make sure that we continue to work on the patterns that we're working on and the shapes that we're working on. And, and ultimately it comes down to other strikers and, and attacking players can score a goal. But we're certainly going to continue to work on that because we've continued since we came in in pre-season to work on that on the training ground. Of course, Hugo was one of the other two that didn't make the starting eleven, but he very nearly came on and, and got his goal in the inches away from the winner. It's a brilliant volley from Jordan. You know, Jordan will go home tonight hotting. He's... We started the last two games after Exeter without him. But he'll also, he's a, he's a brilliant lad, John. He's a very honest pro. He'll go home though we played very well. He's probably thinking as a striker does, I wish I was in line to some of those chances because that's how strikers think. And um, so from our point of view, he's, I thought it was in when it left his foot, the volley. Um, but they've rode their luck today. So, you know, good luck to Bristol Rovers. They're a great club. You know, good people. Matty's a good manager. I said he was unlucky here. But they know they've had a battering today, but they've gone with a point. Of course, the transfer window rolls on a couple of days from bringing Malik in on, on Thursday. You mentioned to Andy that you were potentially closer to getting other bodies through the door. Any closer as we stand? Well, I've not, had, I've not had further updates from Bob Scott or Paul Douglas, but we continue to work on some things. We've just brought a couple of players, you know, we, we look at Malik, we brought Malik in. We've got to get Malik up to speed. You can see today he's missing that little yard of sharpness, but we'll, we'll bring that to his game and he'll bring some wonderful memories, we hope, for the, for the supporters here. He's a, he's a great kid. We're going to love him, but he's going to work hard and we're going to get him there. And we still get Johnson Clark Harris, who missed a lot of pre season, who's fighting to catch up that little bit of sharpness. But he was sharper again today than he was on Tuesday, so we are getting there in different levels. But you know, just be patient, we'll be fine. Top man. Thanks,